Last weekend, when the Hubbles and I piled the kidlets into a rental car, the one with butt-warming seats, the Science Center wasn't our only destination. Our journey also found us standing outside a bookshop, specifically this one, another story bookshop on Roncesvalles Avenue in Toronto. This is that rare and precious gem of a bookstore that holds surprises and delights at every turn, like this wall of pictures by young patrons above a rack of books chronicling the history of rock and roll, or the juxtaposition of these books about Gandhi with David Priestland's alternative history of modern capitalism. Their commitment to social justice, equity, and diversity is evident in the wealth of books from and about 1920s Harlem and Islam and Portugal, especially when these books all share the same shelf, and in this poster about International Women's Day. So it was fitting that the event that brought us here was a celebration of the birth of two books, The Stamp Collector by Jennifer Lanthier and Francois Thisdale, and Gift Days by Carrie Lynn Winters and Stephen Taylor. Like the books around them, these are books whose origins lie in poverty and hardship, born of the knowing that life can be rough in faraway places. They are books that were hard to write, stories that are difficult to tell, but they are necessary, and I'm happy that they're here, so I joined in the celebration. I even ate a book, and then I tried a pencil. It was a good pencil, but the book was more substantial. And I listened to Jennifer and Carrie Lynn talk about how their book sales were raising money for organizations like Pen Canada to free imprisoned and persecuted writers and fight censorship around the world, and because I am a girl to give little girls around the world access to education. And as I listened, it occurred to me that a store that puts a shelf of cookbooks and food memoirs next to a shelf of books about the scarcity of Earth's resources is the perfect place to appreciate the irony of a story about a writer who was imprisoned for writing a story, and a book about a girl who was not allowed to read. As I stood surrounded by a wealth of words and ideas and stories, the realization that the children who made these stories both possible and necessary may never see this many books in their life lent a bitter sweetness to my own contribution. $26 seemed an especially low price to pay for a year of schooling for a Ugandan girl. As I carried my books and my thoughts out with me into the snowy evening, I contemplated my good fortune to have been born in a place and time that I may have such riches at my fingertips. I completely forgot about the butt-warming seats. Thanks for watching.